Hey fellow world wearers, it's Angry Turtle and today I have for you updated OP Gunslinger build based mainly on Alien Blaster. It's currently this is the weapon you want if you want to play a Gunslinger in Fallout 76. So without further ado, let's go step by step what I have included in this build. So the base special is, as you can see here, strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, luck. Of course, agility and luck are the key. Those need to be high because it's a gunslinger. This build will be using VATS, no VATS, stealth, no stealth, and can tank when required. So basically can do everything. From the legendary perks, what I have, I have here Master Infiltrator. This one can be skipped or changed for whatever you need. The key ones are special, total of three, luck, intelligence, endurance. You can of course swap for any other three, special and adjust the base distribution accordingly. After that, we have follow through for extra damage and funky dots for tankiness. And yes, I have those upgraded to the maximum. If you don't have enough points, you are not so high level. What you should focus on is legendary luck. This is the one that you will need first. Intelligence, endurance and all other perks you can live without or with much lower. The luck is the one that will be needed early. Now the perk themselves. So we want this build to perform in every situation. Therefore, there is blocker for extra tankiness when it's needed. There is traveling pharmacy to have some stim packs to use wherever necessary. Under perception, we have tank killer as this is working with pistols. We have concentrated fire as semi-automatic weapon. Alien blaster benefits greatly from max out concentrated fire. And I have one point in Panapictographist as I like hunting on for magazines. It's not necessary, so you could skip this one. Under Endurance, Life Giver, Ironclad, Fireproof and Radical. If you don't have enough special, just skip Ironclad. You will save five points in here. Life Giver, Fireproof and Radical, I would keep. Radical, not essential. This one is just for carry weight for me. Fireproof and Life Giver, those are essential, seven points. Then Charisma, Strength in Numbers to boost your mutations, Tenderizer to boost your damage. After that, Intelligence, First Aid. This is great when you need the Steam Pack. You know that whatever Steam Pack you have in your inventory, it will work great. Especially important in Daily Ops Decryption, when enemies really hit hard. Then you have Nerd Rage with extra damage when you are bloodied. And Demolition Expert, yes, this card boosts damage from Alien Blaster, so it's a must. If you want, you could skip first aid. This one is optional. As long as you will be able to stay stealthy, you don't need stim packs. Under Agility, we have Modern Renegade, which helps a lot if you want to play without VATs as this one improves hip fire accuracy, as well as let you cripple your enemies. Master Gunslinger, rank one, then there is Gunslinger, max out and expert Gunslinger, rank two. The reason for that is that I have six points to invest into Gunslinger and no, going for max out expert Gunslinger and skipping master is not a good option because as you can notice, the first rank is 10% and then every upgrade is just 5%. So you never skip a card, you just rank some of those cards lower. Born Survival for tankiness, auto steam pack usage, very handy. Escape Artist, that's all you need for stealth if you are running an yielding armor. Adrenaline for extra damage and Dodgy for extra tankiness. Yes, there is a conflict if you want to use VATS 
and be tanky with Doji, it doesn't work very well. But in our case, Doji is here just in case, as you can sneak. Therefore, you are not taking any damage and Doji is never triggered. If you get detected, Doji can save your life and Alien Blaster can be used very effectively without VATs. But that will be rare. Situation when you cannot use VATs will be very rare. Then, Underlock Grim Reaper Sprint, one of the card, thanks to which you can use VATs almost always. Action points will refresh very quickly with kills. Better criticals for extra critical damage. Serendipity again for tankiness. It is as well a very good combo with Doji. Whenever Serendipity will trigger, Doji will not trigger because you are not getting hit. So there is less AP drain. After that Curator, this one is not essential. It's just for me if I'm using bubble heads and I want to have 15 luck. You could skip it, run with 14 luck, maybe have some luck on your armor. Star genes to keep your mutations, critical savvy to pull a critical every other shot. And those are the cards, now mutations. So mutations for this build, as we are playing low health, adrenal reaction, bird bones for extra agility and reduce fall speed, eagle eyes for extra crit damage and perception for accuracy. We are paying penalty in strength, but that's okay. Strength is just for carry weight on this build. Egghead for extra intelligence, not essential, but helps you possibly get more experience. Herbivore, because we'll be using the easy food. Health mentality, always, always join the team and you will get free to your special. Marsupial, for extra high jumping, Scully skin for extra tankiness, yes it does cost a little bit of AP, you could skip it if you don't want to pay this penalty. Speed Demon for faster reload and movement speed, and here I have Twisted Muscle, don't take this one. I'm just occasionally using my chainsaw in order for me to show you exactly how this build works. Without Twisted Muscle I just pop a serum to suppress a side effect for one hour. Now about the gear, the most important part is Alien Blaster. You want a two shot, if you will get second or third star that are good, awesome. If you will get just one star two shot, you are still good and set to go. The best possible will be two shot, but critical damage, less AP cost. So my, my is close, not quite there, the third star is missing. Of course it does need to be modified with Long Barrel, Sharpshooter's Grip, Cryo Mag, and I prefer Standard Side over a Scope. Scope is not really useful in my opinion. About armor, I do recommend Secret Service, full set of unyielding, other stars, not very important, the jetpack on your chest, ultralight on all your limbs. Outfit I'm using is Clean Spacesuit and Clean Spacesuit Helmet. This outfit is quite rare, but maybe you will obtain it. About the backpack, is from previous scoreboard in regards to the skin, Alistar's chronometer backpack, and importantly, it's high capacity as I like to carry stuff. And my under armor is secret service shielded lining, although any under armor will do. The one important thing, whatever you will be wearing, when you look at your special you want at least 30 free luck. If you will get lower, you need to add it by choosing appropriate under armor. And lastly, the food I'm using, I have Brahmin milk for micro rat management, as popping one Brahmin milk removes a little bit of your radiation, which makes it very handy. Then standard loadout corn soup for extra AP region, mute fruit juice for extra agility and tato juice for max AP boost. Those are super cheap buffs that you will craft at your camp. Occasionally when there will be a boss fight you would need a blight soup to increase your critical damage. You don't really need it for everyday use case. And finally a quick demonstration how well this build actually works. If you can sneak you should use it. 
that adds you a little bit of extra damage and saves your gear from being damaged and your steam packs. So if you can sneak, you sneak and as you can see, the hit chance is awesome. You don't even need to aim for a head for most enemies. Critical usually is one shot kill without critical two, sometimes three shots will put down most enemies. As you can see, very efficient. The VAT's accuracy goes up real quick, so you can snipe as far as you can get your VATs to trigger. Now, in case of Scorch Beast, if you aim for the head, hold your critical button, it will do a quick work even out of three-star legendary Scorch Beast. And usually you should have enough AP to unload like a full 30 rounds from Aryan Blaster with one go. The only limitation is how fast can you pull the trigger or if you have those fancy controllers with turbo button. And that's as easy as it goes to eradicate enemies. If you cannot use VATs and you need to tank. Oh, and just one quick tip. I have my Brahmin milk on the hot wheel. So then I can just pop it whenever my rats are slightly too high. So now if I need to go on those robots just firing firing in front of me, I can absolutely do it. There is nothing stopping me from doing it. If I cannot use VATs, that's still okay. I can use VATs, but if for whatever reason those enemies would be invisible or something would block me from VATs usage, I just go and spam the button and kill them as easy as that you are tanky enough with this setup to survive almost any assault there is really not too many situation when you can die i can go and provoke all robots outside of white spring to shoot at me and as you can see my auto trigger steam pack from born survival is able to out heal that I'm taking damage, the damage is being healed, the dodgy is triggered, but my AP regenerate fast enough that even though I'm using dodgy, I still have AP to use VATs if I would need to. There are all those robots firing at me, two sentry bots firing at me, some gardeners, gutsies, some responders, everyone is firing at me and so far there was no need to manually use a steam pack. So the risk of death is really, really low. And in most case scenarios, zero. Now, if I want to fight them without sneaking or using VATs, that's the power that this build can put out. All those sentry bots without aiming, without going for anything in particular, I can handle that. There is really not much that can stop you with this build. But no. I don't even know if there is any scenario. I was able to beat any content. You can solo endgame bosses. Maybe I will do showcase later with some endgame bosses. As you can see, nothing. Nothing really can stop this build. The damage output is great. This is truly powerful build. And look how well it looks. It looks amazing. And is powerful. Two in one. You cannot get much more than that. And that being said, I hope you enjoyed this showcase. Let me know if you have any questions and I will try to address those in comments. And now, thank you a lot for watching and see you all in the next one.